fellow pro wrestling fans. My name is Freddie Fredrickson. This is a State of Pro Wrestling interview exclusive with The System. Mango Madness at the Lift Bridge, Midwest All Star Wrestling. Hello, fellow pro wrestling fans. My name is Freddie Fredrickson. This is State of Pro Wrestling exclusive. We are here with the one, the only, the system. How are you doing tonight? Big show, and how'd you like the show? I enjoyed myself. It was great to see you in a new light. Uh, people cheering you on for once. What is that like? I mean, that's, it's awesome. It's, uh, I'm looking for a reaction, I guess, you know? And, and as long as they're passionate, that's what I'm going for. Um, yeah, it's been a wild couple months with MAW, and uh, I've lost a lot of friends. Uh, lost my videographer, Johnny. Lost my long-standing relationship with Coda Jacobs. I uh, lost my, my beefy Russian, Real Drago. Uh, I've lost, uh, lost a lot of friends recently in the last couple of months, but, uh, you know, it is, it is definitely more than just a consolation. It's more than I ever hoped for, just having the, the, uh, the audience, you know, kind of come from behind and, uh, and be there for me. Yeah, it was great. Great to see everybody getting behind you. Well, signature dance. What you got a name for that signature uh, dance? You do? Nah, we gotta come up with one. Oh, gotta come up with one. Hey, that's. Yeah, it's uh. Well, you know how the the pro wrestling business is, you know, like. But you know, Rampage. You know that that's someone I would consider a friend. Paul as well. You know, we we all train together and. Uh, yeah, they, I not they, no, I got their back, you know. Like, yeah, it was great to see you out there. You came in there for the save. You got Paul's back tonight. Uh, the fans were really behind you. A great high-profile match tonight. Can you take us uh, a little in-depth coverage of your match, maybe? Yeah, I watched a ton of film of, of uh, Yuya, primarily Impact film, and uh, okay. you know, it, I met him a little bit before the show. Tried to get a, a feel of you know how we wanted things to go down, um, and at, you know, my, that's my first. Uh, Japanese competitor I've ever I've ever faced, so it was definitely I knew I was going to be walking into something different, and uh, definitely a top three chop oh. for sure. Ooh, for intense, sure. Intense, intense. Is your your chest probably the same color? Matches. Yeah, this was a white T-shirt, bro. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna cap to you. It's vicious, vicious. The intensity you guys brought, man. I loved it. This is our first time here, uh, checking out the Lift Bridge shows here in uh, Stillwater. Beautiful crowd, got behind everything, uh, and that that beautiful violin. Can you take us uh, behind your uh, violin training? Uh, what got you into all that? Yeah, so it's a fun story. I, I was I was enrolled in violin lessons uh, at the tender age of seven uh, by my mother, and uh, it was more so of a not really a choice kind of a deal. You know, it's like you're doing this. Um, played a. Uh, uh, orchestra with the uh, Virginia Evelyn Gilbert High School Orchestra uh, was uh, first chair my senior year. You know who's counting. Uh, did a did a year of uh, Masabi uh, Community Orchestra uh, upon graduating from high school, and then once I came down to the U in the cities, dropped it completely because I was I never wanted to do it, mom. I never wanted to do it, mom. But then I came. But uh, I, I started my pro wrestling career after I graduated college, and uh, it was literally a uh, my first ever battleground promo. Where I was like, I'm the system, and I'm gonna win, and I'm gonna get the pin, and I'm a fin, and then I brought out my violin so that the guy could be like, hey, is that a violin alliteration? And uh, I think it was Josh Kalisto with Showtime at the time, now Higher Ground, uh, was not in with a Higher Ground Showtime, but uh, once he saw that, he's like, hey, bring that violin to a show, and uh, maybe I'll book you, and then, I, and then I did, and then he didn't book me on that show, he booked me on the second one. So Josh Kalisto uh, is the one that uh, is the first guy that uh, debuted the the violin system, and then Ken was all about it. My trainer Ken Anderson, uh, everyone else like was like, "Hey, this makes you different." And I'm like, "Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe mom was right. Maybe maybe this maybe this could be something." Mom knows best sometimes. You know, you know and uh, you know, over quarantine when we didn't have a, a lot going on, uh, really strapped down and like, hey, I, I should probably learn how to play this thing, you know. And that's when I bought the the nice six grand uh, Mark Wood electric violin, and uh, that was going to be originally for uh, Fortune Bania 2, 
which of course got axed due to COVID. But uh, the uh, yeah, got a nice little electric violin out of it, and it's super cool to two years later, three years later, be able to bust it out and uh, you know play it for everybody on the way to the ring. Definitely, yeah, the fans were feeling it. Everybody was into it tonight. Great to see the reaction. You brought up uh, the name Ken Anderson in your training. Uh, can you tell us a little about your experience there at the academy? Yeah, he's. I owe my whole career to Ken Anderson. My, my, like the my biggest matches when I first came out, getting me in front of the right people. I, I'd have no right being in front of those people if it weren't for Ken Anderson and his word and you know his reputation with all the boys in the industry. You know, he's uh, maybe from a high level from a fan's perspective. It's there's a lot of propaganda going around where he'd be like, you know, he he could have been this huge star in WWE and now he's here. Uh, you know, in my opinion, like the way things are going, you know, we could be looking at him 20, 30 years from now is just like, that's not going to be his legacy. He, he's trained uh, Airwolf, uh, you know, the Martins, uh, JDX, me, Coda Jacobs. You, you go to the Academy School of Professional Wrestling dot com, that graduate page list. And then there's another 10 or 20 guys he's got that are fighting to get on that page. But once they get there, you know, it's it's an impressive portfolio already. Certainly, certainly the stars who have broken through, who have graduated, as you mentioned, and uh, just the Minnesota scene as a whole has just became so much more amazing, so many more places to work with the level of talent everywhere right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was super uh, exciting and last minute. Let me tell you, because I, I think I was going to leave to go train with uh, Rampage and Gable. So it was like I had a pretty like fun wrestling day already planned. Um, but as I get in the car, get a text from uh, someone who I started with. But, you know, it's someone, someone in the business who's also around and was already on AEW saying, hey, we, we need two extra guys. Do you have this, this, and this? And I knew I had two out of the three things. So I said yes. And I found the third thing. And I scrambled. And... Uh, uh, Captain Sean Dean was amazing in helping me, you know, become eligible for that. And uh, I got on TV and was moving 100 miles an hour. And uh, what was it, like a four-minute, five-minute match with the Dark Order? And, uh, you know, we'll say six minutes, you know, eight minutes. And I got none. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a fun time. It, something like that. But, yeah, it, it made an AEW debut. And uh, it was just... It moves so fast for me, man. That's that's that was my reaction, feelings to it all is you know, just trying to get everything in, and it all happened last minute. But you know, it's something that you you know everybody saw, and we can all look back on, and it's it's a great memory. It was it was different and in an amazing way. Like I never heard a stadium pop before, and not to say mine was huge, but I was not expecting to tag in and then hear like a like a ah, you know it hits different in a in like a, a stadium. Um, so that was uh, awesome. I, I I can be nothing but grateful for it. You know, it's um, yeah. I was it's flabbergasting. Certainly, awesome. certainly. Very cool experience. Were you able to get uh, feedback, or what is that whole process like? Is it kind of like an evaluation, or it's mostly just having uh, your like blood work done, having your medical, like having everything up to date, and that kind of a sense. You know, you got to have like your, uh, your your COVID card if you don't have like more than a certain number of. Uh, I think if, if you didn't have like two shots, you had to get a COVID test right before, which is what I had to go through, and so it's just a whole bunch of that kind of due diligence where it's like. You'd hate to not be able to like step up to the plate and you know be eligible to do something like that for sure. for stuff like that. So, just a lot of administrative stuff that a wrestler would struggle with. But we got there, and I got to be in a, a four man with uh, the Riley Jackson and uh, who else was there? Uh, Adam Grace, and then uh, another guy that I that I met there. Adam Grace, we about to see him uh, next month. ACW Water City Wrestling Con. Shout out to Adam Grace. Yeah, what's some goals moving forward here? Uh, There's one that 
There's one thing I love. It's that Midwest All-Star Wrestling Championship. I've put a lot of uh, energy into this company for good reason. You know, they do good business with everybody, and I, I love Dave and Eli and Brian, and uh, they've really got something going. And, uh, you know, they've taken, they're on notice by a lot of, by a lot of other outfits. And uh, I felt that uh, back in like 2019, 2020, and, uh, you know, I stuck with them. And, you know, if, if we're just talking about my plans, I just want to control what I can control. And, uh, you know, these guys have been great to me. And so I'm just absolutely obligated to be great back to them. You know, I want to be able to lift MAW to where it can go because that I've never seen, you've been around the scene a lot longer than me. I don't know if there's ever been, I don't want to say money being thrown around, but just like investment and love being thrown into a promotion and, you Certainly. know, it, it paying off. So I feel like tonight was a great example of that, almost like a super card of sorts for the fans here. It was almost like an MAW uh, impact like versus impact super card, something like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, and it's something that I don't think I've seen happen, well, in my career, consistently on behalf of one company. So it's, and for me to be, you know, uh, put in a, in a position that, that Eli and Dave and Brian and, you know, the, the locker room's got to have my back too. It's, uh, that, that's something I can control and uh, that, that would be my plan over the course of the next the year. I, I would want to be the first ever Midwest All-Star Wrestling two-time heavyweight champion. Yeah, it's been great to see the rise of MAW Midwest All-Star Wrestling. Just uh, many high points throughout this year. The super super match, super card style matches that we've seen. Um, let's see, any other last, uh, any words for uh, one Coda Jacobs? You see, I, I could be coming at you with, a, with an 80s-fueled, hatred-fueled rant about a man named Coda Jacobs. Because we started the same day. I know a lot about this man. But you know what? He, if there's one thing, he's smart. He, he's a smart individual. And he's very calculated, very... Um, what's the word? Very uh, stoic, cunning. He's not going to... He's not going to bite on, on something simple. You know? He, he, he's been around just as long as I have. I, I haven't seen anybody, you know, smarter in terms of not even just in the ring, but like how you play the politics backstage. You see what I think? Uh, I saw the writing on the wall and I think he did too. What we saw over the course of the last year, Brian Craig Sager is not going to let me win back my championship by, by dastardly means. And as much as I don't like that decision, because you can't just like an, an NBA commissioner can't just tell refs, oh, this this guy's this team's going over today, you know? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, that's not how it, that's not how it works. Um, so, but it, it's cool to be at, at, at such a stature where I got to be singled out, where I, I can't cheat, and so uh, it, that's just the way it has to be. There's nothing the system wants more than the bash. A violin over somebody's head. You know, I yearn for it. It makes me feel so great. But I can't do it here in MAW if I want to be MAW champion. And I really want to be MAW champion. So I just have to, I have to do without it. And Coda and Johnny, I know they smell blood in the water in, in terms of weakness. And they were doing what they had to do. I sort of sensed it coming when Johnny didn't show up to the building last month. So it, it, it hurts nonetheless, but it, it is to be expected. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what it takes to become the first ever two-time MAW champion. Well, we hope you the best in your quest to be, do that and do it the right way this time as well. We're here, the system. Thank you very much for joining us. What a night of pro wrestling action there. MAW Mango Madness at the Lift Bridge. System showing love to the fans. Let's dive into that match that was former MAW champion, the system. Versus Yuya Yamura.
what a great night. Pro wrestling action. Grateful for MAW. Bringing in uh, great talents such as the ODB. Frankie Kazarian in the main event. Got to chop it up with Andrew a bit. Love getting to mix it up. Uh, Like I said, grateful for MAW allowing us the opportunity to do this. Like we mentioned in the interview, System taking a second to look at that title belt before he gave it back to the champion, Paul Verk, earlier on in the show. System making the save. But yeah, let's get into those beautiful shots from us. The official state of pro wrestling photographer, Daniel Rose. Here we are, uh, Yuji Gamora, a New Japan pro wrestling star here in the States. Grateful to have him here in Minnesota, taking on former MAW champion, The System. Like we said, trying to do it the right way. This time embracing the crowd as well, getting them behind him. An intense matchup. Love this uh, clash of styles here, the personality of the system, and the hard-hitting style that is Yuya Yamura. See the system. It's a great uh, back-and-forth here display. Uh, Two great uh, world-class talents here going one-on-one, no interference Oh, some classic elbow drop there. RJ getting some great facials in as well. That huge bulldog. I know uh, Drake got a great shot of that as well. System using that power of the crowd. Get fired up. Love the use of the vintage wrestling moves. Elbow drop, knee drop. Like I said, even the ref super into it this time we were just talking about those facials what he adds to the matches uh, grateful for RJ see all that beautiful beautiful barrels of beer in the background there yum Yuya fed up what can he do to close the system out tries to catch him in another one of those vicious suplexes system rolls through Got the pinning predicament there. Couldn't put him away. System tried to go for the uh, pile driver. Or power bomb here, excuse me. Yeah, just the energy he's bringing. Uh, the crowd interaction. Of those moments where he gets the crowd fired up. Delivering a suplex of his own here. Just that raw energy the system brings. Since uh, breaking himself free. Yuya not giving up, delivering another one of those vicious suplexes. RJ says, I don't want, I don't, I'm, luckily I'm wearing the stripes. And then the cross body off the top. You thought this might be it. The system, though, rolls through, catches Yuya. The one, two, three. Can't believe it. Hopefully. We could run this match back. Uh, amazing matchup. System, trust the system signs everywhere. Great to see. Uh, appreciate photographer Daniel Rose and all the images he was able to capture. We'll be there April 22nd, Wilmer Mania. This time it'll be the system in a mixed tag match. Going to be a good one. Wilmer Mania 4 coming up April 22nd. Uh, Wilmer, Minnesota. State of Pro Wrestling will be there ringside. Look at that great lineup. Excited about the interviews and content we have lined up. We hope to see all you fans out there. Wilmer, Minnesota, April 22nd for Wilmer Mania 4.